Well, Shannon, uh, front right here. Uh, obviously, only a few days away from a massive pay-per-view here in Perth, a uh, country that's been starved for a big event like this. So what are the emotions uh, now that we're only a few days away and the hard part is over? You just got to make weight and fight. Yeah, it's uh, it's phenomenal, mate. It's um, I, I've said to a few people this week, this is like a like your wife's wedding day, the, uh, the perfect dress, the perfect car, the perfect venue. For me, this is uh, I get to fight in my country, my fans don't have to travel too far I've had an awesome camp so it's like the perfect turnaround for me um, and yeah looking looking forward to obviously fighting on a massive pay-per-view card and getting topped by a by a chance for Alex to fight for a double world title so it makes it even even more interesting well, obviously given how your last fight went on the contender series was there any were you I don't want to surprise might not be the word but when they announced this massive Perth card were you nervous that maybe you wouldn't get to be on this card because you don't see a lot of fighters signs coming off a loss on the contender series like that yeah I wasn't I wasn't too nervous about not getting on this card because I already had a contract so um I thought this would be where I, I make my debut once it got announced because obviously I'm here in the country and it makes sense to have my have my local countrymen here supporting me buying tickets and supporting the event so I wasn't too nervous about that but yeah, I was definitely uh, nervous directly after the fight to see if I would get a contract or not, yes. Did I read right that you had fought a couple of fights with an appendicitis, essentially? So how was that? Yeah, you did. Um, that was my contender series fight. I had appendicitis all fight week, and it was ruptured before I actually went out to the fight. So I fought with a ruptured appendix, septicemia, blood poisoning, and then the day straight after the fight, I went to the hospital in Las Vegas, got emergency surgery, had to stay in hospital for five days, and then flew back to Australia and started my rehab then. Did you know all of that was happening before the fight? Did you find it all out after? Um, no, I didn't know it was happening. I thought, uh, I'm extremely hungry this fight week, which is a bit strange because I had this stomach pain going on, and I kept pushing it to the back of my head, just thinking, oh, you're being soft and you're hungry, don't worry about that. And then obviously the day after the fight when I'm shaking and convulsing in my hotel room, my coach said, this isn't hunger, this is something else. We got down to the hospital and they CT, CT scanned my stomach and, yeah, they said, you've got a ruptured appendix, mate, and we've got to go in for surgery. So when all that came out, like the blood poisoning, the appendicitis and everything, did the UFC call you and just be like... Like, what, like, are you crazy? Like, why didn't you, you know, say something earlier? Yeah, so it was pretty funny. I, um, I went, we went down to the hospital. We got diagnosed with the ruptured appendix. I told my manager and um, we were down there and the UFC doctor from the event at, Ve at the Apex, was, he was there at the hospital and he, w he was saying, oh, man, that was a crazy fight. Like, that was so good. You Australians are crazy. I said, I would love to chat to you about the fight, but I feel like I'm dying. I'm like, can you help me at the moment? So he sort of put a pause to that, um, got me scanned, come back and said, mate, you've got a ruptured appendix. He goes, you would have had, a, had to have had appendicitis for four to five days for it to get to this stage. So he was just blown away. And then obviously when my managers told the UFC staff and been in contact with them and told them what's going to happen and, um, yeah, sort of went forward from there. And then I woke up from surgery, had some missed calls from him. I got him on the phone. Um, he's he's just going pretty ecstatic that uh, he's been speaking to Dana and Mick. And after them finding out what happened, they were like, that came to sign me because all fight week, there was no excuses. I made weight. I was a total professional. Um, and, yeah, they were pumped. So I think they want to see what I can do when I'm healthy. Well, then looking at this fight, uh, what do you make of your opponent? He has a lot of submissions, a lot of knockouts, a lot of decisions. Do you just view him as kind of an all-well-rounded fighter standing across from you in the octagon? Yeah, definitely. Um, Clayton's definitely well-rounded. He's, uh, he's young and he's hungry. And obviously, everyone in the UFC now is tough, so you've got to respect that. You've got to respect skills. Um, I think I've got a great game plan to uh, beat Clayton on Sunday morning. Um, and yeah, definitely just got to be smart, got to be strategic not get in those crazy firefights like I did on the uh, Contender Series and, yeah, use my game plan at its, at its best. And I think you're the first Australian or this, from this part of the world fighting on the card, correct? Like the one before you 
has a Brazilian and I believe a Dagestani fighting. So is there any extra pressure to kind of set the table for the rest of the fighters above you? Um, I think I think there's a few Australian guys fighting before me, but um, either way, I want to perform for my country and for my for my fans and family, and most of all for myself and my team, and show that show that we belong on this level of combat athletes in the in the biggest best league in the world and yeah show show i'm here for a reason and final one for me how do you see the main event playing out between alex and islam yeah the main event um i was actually luckily lucky enough to get down to wingdang and do four weeks of my camp with alex so um i think he's got all the tools and all the all the credentials heart and resilience to to take this one i think alex will probably win it by a decision I think he's smart enough and cerebral enough to uh, negate what Islam's going to bring to the table. And, yeah, I think he gets it done in the, in the end, yep. And, uh, Shannon, you, you got your contract coming off a loss, but it was because of your toughness uh, and your ability to put on a show. Is that extra pressure heading into this fight? Like, if you just grind out a decision win, it's kind of not why they brought you in. Do you feel that pressure to, to go out there and, and bring fireworks? Um, no extra pressure, mate. That's how, that's how I fight all the time. You would have seen some of my fights here in Australia on the local scene and, um, that's how I always fight. I don't plan on changing how I fight. Um, obviously that's not why I'm here. I, you, you've heard Dana say like these guys come over from contender series, they brought you over for a reason and then you change the whole way you fight to be safe and try to squeeze out a contract. That's not in me. That's not any part of my fighting style and I'm not going to change now. And can you talk about how instrumental your wife and your family is as you've mentioned previously how close you were to walking away from the sport? Yeah, definitely, mate. Um, My wife's massive. She pretty much made me have another fight and then we got awarded the Contender Series contract. So without her, I wouldn't be here right now. Um, My kids and her, like, obviously that's why... I do this and I train hard and I really push to be the best man I can be. Um, yeah, so the start of 2022 when it was COVID was still happening, I was ready to quit and she pretty much forced me to like, no, nope, you got to stick at it. You're almost there. You're going you're gonna to get it. And literally within a couple of weeks of signing a fight locally, the world starts opening back up and we get that contender series contract. And yeah, here we are now, 2023, pretty much a year from the date I was about to hang him up. Thanks, mate. Best of luck. How you going, Shannon? Over here. G'day, yeah, mate. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Um, when you had that found out about um, being signed up to the UFC after you woke up in hospital, did it take a wee while to kind of process that? Because I imagine you're still kind of drugged up and stuff like that, just waking up. <laughs> exactly, mate. I was um, I was pretty much straight out of the surgery and jumped on my phone. Had a few missed calls from the wife. Had a few missed calls from Denny, my manager. Um, I called him back and then he's telling me all about it, telling me I've got the contract and I was like legitimately thinking I was hallucinating. I was like, is this real? What's going on here? Like I just, I lost, I've just got a big hospital bill and now I'm getting a contract. I'm like, I don't know if this is really happening. And then obviously, yeah, a couple of hours later and we talk a bit more and I sort of come back to life a bit and yeah, it sort of took that little bit to set in and yeah, pretty ecstatic feeling waking up from surgery, having that contract awarded to me. And you said that this is kind of like the perfect wedding where um, everything's kind of fallen in place, but could you picture something being slightly different for a perfect debut? Um, not really, man. The only the only difference was if the fight was in my hometown on the Gold Coast of Brisbane. That's the, the only little difference you could make to change this and make it a fraction better. But um, it's uh, Perth, beautiful. I love being over here. I uh, love, love getting into this fight week and learning how it all works, meeting the staff and all the people. Um, it's, absolutely, it's been absolutely awesome, yep. And uh, last question from me. Going into your first fight on the big UFC stage, do you have you taken into account any kind of nerves you'll get walking out in front of a big crowd and um, anything like that? Um, not really. I think um, a little bit of nerves is good, right? If you are, if you use them in the right way, they can they can help you perform, help you do what you need to do. Um, I've fought internationally before. I've fought on big shows in Australia before. I feel like with 20 pro fights, I should be be pretty uh, confident with my skill set and how I walk out. 
the other good thing is being here at Fight Week, I've got to ask a lot of the uh, Australian fighters that have already made their debuts and done that stuff, and I've asked all of the guys for little tips and how to how to be better and approach it and take all the feelings in, and so that's been a massive help as well. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank you, guys.